sunshine and welcome back to my studio. We are doing a little review today on this fancy thing right here, which is the Faber-Castell Creative Studio 48 Solid Watercolor Set. <laughs> I'm so excited to try out the Faber-Castell watercolors. I've been meaning to do it for a really long time and I'm pumped to see what they're actually like. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, the way that this is going to work is this. <laughs> I have three tests that I like to do when I'm reviewing watercolour. I've decided that because we haven't reviewed that much watercolour, but we're doing it now. <laughs> so the first one is we're doing a vibrancy test. And the second one is we're going to be doing a gradient test. And the third, third one is we are going to do a blending test. And with the blending test, we're actually going to paint something because that's the easiest way to test the blending. Yep. But before we do that, before we do any of that, is we're just gonna pull it out and have a little look. It's a very cool little set. I have looked at it before, but I wanna show you again. All right, let's just open this up then. So we've got a flappy flap and the, the package itself, it's a cardboard box. Like, it doesn't need to be that impressive. But here we go. This, this is what I love about this, this whole entire thing is the shininess and just how clean it is. It's not gonna stay clean, like it's paint. It's definitely not gonna stay clean, but I appreciate that it's clean to start with, you know. Ooh. Okay, anyway, let's open it up. Apparently, I noticed there is a removable palette. So this palette here, I think, we should be able to take out somehow. There is a lot of colors in there. There's a lot of colors. 48 colors is a lot of colors. <laughs> You'd really hope that you could find absolutely every single color you could possibly imagine in that 48 colors. And instantly for me, I'm particularly drawn to the neon colors because um, I really like bright colors, but there's also like a, the metallic -y colors there as well. And they've got a really nice, range of colors so it goes from yellow to red to blue i just like the way it's set up it's quite cool i've also got here a water brush now you guys know how i feel about water brushes and i'm gonna keep going on about them because i hate them <laughs> i just think they're silly to put into a beginner's set i don't know if this is a beginner's set to be perfectly honest it's just a set of watercolors but just <sighs> the water brush is really hard because you get the same consistency all the way along because it's got the same amount of water in it. You can't really get different watercolor effects. Whereas a normal watercolor brush, you can do that. You can vary your line width, etc. I could go on for hours about the water brush, <laughs> but that's okay. We have a water brush here. We also have a sponge and we have already ascertained that I'm a terrible watercolorist because I don't use a sponge and I don't know what it's for and that's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the, the sponge. Um, honestly, like coming into it as, you know, fresh eyes, someone that's never used the kit before, it looks really nice. Like I still feel like the paint looks edible. Um, they look like little lollies, little bits of plasticine, but it looks really nice. It's a really lovely set. So that's it for this. I really wish though, I really wish that they had a skin tone. That's like the only color that these kits always seem to lack is some kind of skin tone or something that we could use a base for a skin tone with, you know? Um, that's the only color that I would suggest them putting in. I mean, they've got a hundred bazillion colors. Otherwise, it's just they, they don't have that skin tone color and that's okay, that's fine. 48 colors and not one skin tone, what do you do? So guys, let's, uh, let's get started and actually do our tests because I'm really curious to see what these little bite-sized cute palette paints are gonna be like. And like magic, everything is set up. Today I am using my own brush. Uh, this is a size eight round brush in the silver black velvet range. These are my favorite brushes ever. Now this is one of the brushes I use all the time. So I think it'll be a really good comparison for the paints. So I normally use Daniel Smith paint and I think this is, this is gonna be really good to use on these paints as well. So I can compare the pair. All right, so I'm gonna use the same colors for each of my 
tests. And I think that will be our primaries. So yellow, blue, and red. And I really want to try this like aqua over here because it's just so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use those colors the whole entire time. So let's start off with our yellow. I don't think, I think we'll just stick to the normal yellow. I think that's going to be vibrant enough. But so far it's reactivating very easily, which is a good sign. So with watercolor, when it dries, it dries completely. And so when you reactivate it, you want to see that everything's mixing together well and that you're getting a nice amount of paint on the brush, which I am here there's a nice amount of paint on the brush. Now what I'm gonna be doing with this is just like some little, these little squares just to see how vibrant this paint is going to be. So we might start off down here. I'm actually relatively impressed. It actually feels more like almost a, almost a gouache. But I like how bright it is. Like that's a bright yellow. You can't tell me that that's not a bright yellow. So let's try the blue now. I am impressed at how much paint is getting picked up each time I go back to the palette. That's very nice. But again, that's nice and vibrant, isn't it? This is a pretty good vibrancy test if I do say so myself. All right, so now we want the red. So far I'm in Impressed. More impressed than I thought I would be. But this is just our first test. Who knows what they're going to be like to blend with. I'm not sold on how the water is pooling in the paint. But it's not bad. And it'll depend how it dries as well. This is, this is a hard, I'm, I'm trying to jump ahead here, aren't I? Accidentally, I'm trying to jump ahead. So this is just all about the vibrance. Let's stick to the vibrance. And so far the vibrance is pretty good. One thing I'm not a super fan of is that the paint goes up around the palette. I know this is such a silly small thing, but I think because it's so close together to the other paints, I think it's gonna be really easy to mix them. I don't know, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Ooh, I love that color. Aquary green here. Yeah, I mean that color's not, definitely not as, as good with the coverage. Like the coverage isn't as good. Um, it's definitely more watery, that color, which is interesting. So let's do the pink, because that's just a glorious pink. Wow, yeah, okay, that's definitely fluoro. I don't know what I would use that for, but it's really fun. <laughs> vibrance. Remember, we're judging on the vibrance for this test. And so far I like the vibrance. Let's do a gold. So it's quite light, but I don't mind it because it's almost like a sheen. I don't know that it would be a solid gold color. No, it's not really a solid gold color but it's more of a sheen. It would be a nice um, effect, perhaps. Okay, it's interesting looking at them now that they've dried a little bit. Um, look, they're not bad. Like the vibrancy, particularly in the yellow, I'm really impressed with. Um, as it's drying, it's not as vibrant as I thought it was going to be. It's almost, it's dulled a lot in the drying process, but I will reserve judgment until our next test. <laughs> so that is the vibrance test done, guys. Results are inconclusive. <laughs> so let's move on to the next test, which is gradients. Okay, in this test, we are talking all about gradients. And now gradients are important in watercolor painting because it's all about the merging of two different colored pigments coming together pretty seamlessly. So with watercolor, it's all about the blending, right? And so gradients are a really nice form of that that we can see really visually. And that is what we're gonna test right now. So we're gonna do the same colors that we used earlier. I'm going to match the yellow with 
maybe the blue and the red with the little aqua color that we tried. And I think we might use the fluoro color and our gold just to see how these colors work together. So we're gonna start with our yellow up the top here. And we want to get lighter as we get further down the gradient, like so. And now the blue. Whoop, let's push that out properly. Okay, so we've got one blend happening with the yellow and blue. It's not bad. We have got a bit of green happening in the middle because yellow and blue primary colors make green. Um, but that's okay, I'm okay with that. And at the moment, the blend is pretty seamless. Let's try the next one. So we've got the red here. And this is that kind of burnt orangey red. With that kind of aqua green. I love the color of this, it's so beautiful. If we have a look at the red and the green here, it's not blended together very well, which is interesting. And I wonder if it's just the pigment of the different colors. Like there's almost the red sitting directly underneath this aqua color. It's very strange that it's not blended together. Okay, next we have our bright pink and the gold. Hopefully this will look really nice because bright pink and gold, you can't go wrong, can you? So we'll grab our pink and our gold. It's almost more a highlight or an effect that might be given over the top. Like that is not blending well at all. If you guys can see this streaking. Okay, so the pink and the gold are not really friends. <laughs> the gold is kind of running away from the pink a little bit. And I think that this is a bit indicative of what the paints are like. Like the yellow and the blue are actually pretty good. But the other colors that are a little bit different or unusual, the pigment's not quite as strong and they're not moving together as well as I would like. But in saying that, they're still pretty good for what they are. They're not my professional watercolors, but, you know, I, I feel like I could work with these, you know. You could get the effects that you want with a little bit of work. All right, so let's move on to the next and final test. Yay! So this test I'm really excited about, it's the blending test. We have come to the most exciting test, well for me anyway, I actually get to paint some things. Now with this test, which is blending, I want to kind of see what will happen as if I were to paint a normal artwork. So I want to do shadows and highlights and all of the things that I would normally put into an artwork to just test how this paint's going to blend together and how seamlessly we can make our beautiful snail. <laughs> So let's get started. I'm going to keep this palette for the snail relatively simple. So purples and blues and greens. That's the, the colour palette that I'm going to go for. And we're going to see what happens and how it all blends together. So we're going to do a stripy purple on the shell and keep it nice and bright and zesty. And then we'll move on to the rest of the artwork. I'm doing stripy on the shell because that way I can test more of the colours all together and see how they blend together. Now, this is a relatively seamless blending in the purple itself. We'll have to see how it dries as to whether it'll be nice and smooth when it's all dry or not. I'm going to use the fluoro pink here as a little bit of an addition on the shell because I think it'll look really nice against this bright purple. Well, yeah, I'd say it's a bright purple. Woo! Yeah, that's definitely fluoro. It's very cute, actually. Okay, I'm just gonna let that dry a wee bit and then I'm gonna come back in with my blending color. So that'll be a darker purple. So we've got a little bit of uh, highlights and lowlights happening in that shell. But we'll come back over to our little snail's body over here and we're going to make that the blue. All 
All right, now I'm going to grab my darker purple and we're going to see how this all blends together. This is actually working out a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. That dark purple really works really well with our snail. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with the blue now. I'm going to add a deeper blue tone to the edges so we can see where the shadows of our little snail are. These colors are very bright, which is a good thing, particularly because we're drawing a snail. <laughs> but I really am keen to use that aqua green that we found earlier. This green though is just so patchy. It's such a shame because it's such a beautiful color. I'm a bit disappointed in it actually. Like you shouldn't be able to see so much of the brush strokes in there. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll try a different color because that color doesn't seem to want to work so well. Let's try a standard green. That actually mixed together really well, surprisingly. And some of that. Oh yeah, that's the color we want. So we've got a blend of that aqua green now and our standard green. That aqua just doesn't seem to have a very smooth pigment for some reason. Sometimes it turns out like that though. Okay, I'm just gonna let everything dry completely before I do the next layer. Okay, I'm just going to see what the black's like. I'm going to use that for his little eyeballs and his little antenna thingies. I think the black is a really good telltale sign at how good the paint is. If it's a really black black, then it's a great paint. We'll just see what happens. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> this paint is interesting. It's almost like a cross between gouache and watercolor. Like it's got that intensity of gouache, but less of the mixability of my professional watercolors. It's a really interesting mix. Just using the pink that's provided for the flowers and it's not a super light pink like it's quite dark it's almost a magenta -y color rather than a pink I use a pink or light pink in my own watercolor quite a lot so it's a bit of an oversight I think on Faber-Castell's part not having a really good pink in here like there's the fluoro pink and there's this like magenta -y colored pink which isn't quite right for skin tones or anything that you might add a pink to i just also realized something else they've not got here is a white there is absolutely no white or super pale colors of any kind in this kit and I think that's a real oversight because it would be really nice to be able to add some kind of highlighting on our little snail here because I'm kind of limited by the colors that I've got and the way that it's blending together. It's very interesting. Like this paint has definitely turned out some of the ways that I expected, but not so much in others. I'm impressed at the the vibrance of the paint the paint is very vibrant but it's 
quite a bit of a struggle to make it blend together seamlessly. It more acts like a gouache than anything else, uh, whereas gouache has this really opaque, beautiful, uh, silky kind of texture to it, but it's really hard to blend it with something else. It almost sits on top of each other, and that's kind of the characteristics that these paints seem to be taking on more than watercolour paints. They're definitely not the professional watercolour paints that I use from Daniel Smith. Um, Daniel Smith have a lot more um, ease of blending, especially for me, is such a massive, massive deal. Whereas these are definitely not blending as seamlessly as I would like them to. But for the price point of a hundred bucks Australian, it's about $70 US for 48 colours. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. There is definitely colors that I feel like there should be in here that aren't to make this set a really versatile, lovely set. But what they have got here is I would say maybe like medium range watercolor paint uh, for a medium range price point. So I guess you're kind of paying for what you're getting. <laughs> It is what it is, and I'm really glad I tried them. I really enjoyed having a good time with the watercolor paints from Faber-Castell, but I think I still prefer their pencils. Okay, everyone, that is it for today. Thank you so much for being here and helping me review the Faber-Castell watercolor paints. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and if, even if you've used them before, please let me know how you found them. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of ways that we can use these paints that I didn't try today. And I'd love to hear your experiences. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and I am still twitching basically every day at the moment. So please come along, it's a really good time. But until I see you next time, guys, please stay safe and keep on painting. Bye.